Welcome to Network Troubleshooting 101. All right, we are going to walk through the network troubleshooting process using ping to be able to go from point A to point B to be able to tell you where your connection is broken. Currently, we're gonna be sitting on this computer right here. We got a bunch of IP addresses, gonna show you how to discover that. And we're trying to figure out if we are trying to go from this server to this computer, and if we're having intermittent connectivity loss, whatever, that connectivity loss could be anywhere along any one of these lines. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different logical sets of places that our network connection could be lost. And the problem is we need to narrow that down. So step number one, need to be able to discover some numbers. So command prompt is your friend especially on Windows. So we're gonna open it up and we're gonna start with IP config. So IP address uh, is going, your IP config is basically gonna tell you your computer's network connections. So the first thing we have and we can identify here, so the far left side uh, tabbed in, that's gonna tell you how many ethernet adapters there are. And all the tabbed in information underneath that is all about the information about that ethernet adapter. This will be the name of the network adapter that you can find from network connections, change adapter options, and it's this ethernet too. If you wanted to call that your LAN, then you could rename it, IP config, and notice it has been updated. So back to our little pictures. First thing we need to know is what is the IP address of the local computer that we're connected to? It's the IPv4 address, all right? So we make a note of that. The next number we need to know is our gateway. And what is our gateway? Our gateway is usually our NAT device. If that's we're home on an internet connection or wherever else, that's either the NAT router or it could be our router and modem combination device. Sometimes that's two devices, sometimes that's one. The next thing we need to know of is what is the our public IP? How do we figure it out public IP? ipchicken.com, thank you very much. There's our IP address. So when we go and connect to an internet website, this is as far as he's concerned where we're coming from. If we had a VPN up, this would be navigating through and showing our VPN server IP address rather than our local, hiding us and our traffic from the internet at large. The next thing we need to know is about the first hop. And that first hop is basically the network equipment down the road for, from your IS, between you and your ISP's stuff. Why is this important? Well, if we have an internet connection, we have a public IP, but we can't get to our first hop. So imagine that's uh, a mile down the road. That's our, if we had a DSL connection, it'd be our DSLAM, it could be a tower, it could be our CO, our central office in our local area. Whatever it is, this is as far as we're ever going to troubleshoot our, our ISP's connection because that's all we can troubleshoot our ISP's connection. If you have connectivity issue between you and that first hop, you know that's a call to your ISP and tell them you know, you're having a problem, please log into my modem and find the issue. Last bit of information we're gonna be using is Google DNS servers. So if we're troubleshooting connectivity, the chances of Google having a problem is pretty slim in comparison to you. So we are going to be using Google as the it is always there checker IP address. And then the last place that we have is where we're actually trying to go. So that could be our RMM server, whatever server that we wanna do. And we can just ping that IP address. So pings and we get our IP address, there it is right there. Now that we've collected all the information that we need, so who we are, who our router's private site is, who our router's public site is, first hop, internet, and where we're going, let's figure out how to test that. Again, back to our command prompt, that's our ping command. There's two things you need to know about ping command. One is ping and one is ping minus T. And what is the minus T? Minus T means keep going forever. If I want to ping, to my server on the internet, I can hit enter and it's gonna give me four packets and it's gonna stop. Well, this problem I'm troubleshooting is probably most likely over hours or days or weeks. So I'd wanna continuously send ping packets. What I can do is I can add the minus T. And when I hit minus T, it's gonna send one packet a second until I tell it to stop. How do I tell it to stop? Control C. Other little note, minus T can either go on the front or the back, so whatever flavor is your preference, then go for it. 
If we want to test our connectivity between our computer, so the first thing we need to know is, is our computer's network uh, adapter working? So we're going to go ping minus T 172.30.3.107. Start it up. We see numbers. We know we're happy. If we don't see numbers, we are not happy. I'm pinging an IP of that doesn't exist, so I'm either going to have a destination host unreachable or I'm going to have a request timed out. Good. You've got numbers. So usually what I say is, you know, if you're walking somebody through this on the phone, you got numbers, you're happy. If you got destination unreachable or timeout, you're not happy. We've got a whole bunch of different places along each of the hops that we need to watch and pay attention to constantly. We need to go to this one, 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 and we need to go to the internet. We could certainly open up a ton of different command prompts, and do ping minus D, do 30, 30, one, and do it, and then we could open up another command prompt, etc. and now you've got to line them so you can see them all at once, and what a pain on the butt that is, so we're not going to do that. Thank you, Nearsoft. Ping info view is the answer to the problem. So let's go ahead and download ping info view, open that file up. Here's our application. We're going to go ahead and extract it to our downloads folder. We're going to go over to our downloads folder. We're going to run the program. First thing we're going to do, ping again every 30 seconds. Well, if we're doing network diagnostics, we want every second so that we can tell when it starts dropping, how often it's dropping. We get 60 pieces of information a minute that we can make decisions about. Where are we going to ping? We're going to ping to every hop that we just discovered. 172.30.3.107. 1. We're going to do our first hop, 52.93.29.25. And then we're going to go to the internet. And then we're also going to go to our final server, whereas we're actually testing to. Notice you can put either IP addresses or DNS names in here. It's just going to do DNS resolution and away she goes. Let's go ahead and blow this up a bit. So the first thing we want is we want to have everything in the order as it's coming from us outwards and to the internet and then to our server. So if you notice, actually the, the order column, we actually want to use that. So let's pull that all the way to the left and sort by it, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we have each of the hops that we want to go to. Our IP of our network adapter, the IP address of our router, the IP address of our public side of our router, the first hop into our ISP's network, Google, and where we're going. We got success counts, we got failed counts, green lights, red lights. Now we can start making decisions. We can see how long it takes. Um, how many consecutives, so very useful information. First two things that's not going to help us. Now I'm using right now inside, I'm using a test server in AWS. So AWS, why am I not getting my public IP? Well, AWS by default blocks all pings to public IPs. So that's why we don't see that guy. The second place that we have is the, the second hop into the network or our first hop out if we were at a home connection. Again, AWS probably doing something funky, blocking us. So in this case, it's not gonna help us. We're gonna have to rely on the connection to Google to tell us whether our internet connection is good between our client and the internet. So is there anything broken on all of these different links? Where did you have a problem? So if you leave this running for a day, you come back to it, you see failed count of anything inside of that first hop, you stop troubleshooting anything else. Your problem is your network connection to your internal router, you're done. Fix it. So what if we don't have any fails on the first one, but we see a bunch of fails on the second one? Now we know have, we have an in-network connection issue. If we were on Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is going to drop. Wi-Fi gets interrupted by microwave ovens and motors and the old man down the road. So if you're having a periodic, you're on Wi-Fi, you know, it fails in a 24-hour period, like 100 or 200, you know, one every couple minutes. 
Yeah, I can see that happening. It's Wi-Fi, best effort. Ethernet connection, you should never have a drop between you and your router because if that's an ethernet connection between your computer and your switch and then your switch and your router, you got wiring issues or you have a bad switch or you have a bad router. So those should never be failing. Next hop out would be our internet connection and you'd usually have some numbers here. If you're seeing drop, these two are fine, but you start having failures on that next one out, that tells us our router or NAT device is having problems. So some way, somehow, maybe you got routers doing IDS, dropping packets, it's got a hairball, who knows what, but that's where your problem's coming from. Next hop out. This is our, remember where we were? So this is our ISP's first hop. So just imagine, so our wires coming from our computer to our router, possibly passing through a switch. We got the public side of our router and then it goes to the first piece of equipment down the road. There could be telephone poles, there could be D slams, there could be equipment and COs, there could be any number of things. But if this connection is broken between your NAT router and your first hop, that's an ISP problem. You're gonna call them up, you're gonna sell them, please log into my modem, see if you can see me online. They're gonna say, I cannot. We're gonna deploy a tech and fix your problem. Anything in the middle here, this is again sort of between the ISP slash internet slash interconnection points to Google. So again, we're using that number. So this Google should be pretty steady. Now, Google's not perfect. If you run this regularly, you're gonna see, you know, Google probably drop 20 to 60 packets over a 24 hour period. It's the internet. More than that, you're gonna be using those other numbers above to try and make a determination. So is this a connection issue on your side where you can fix it, or it's a connection not in your side where you cannot fix it? And then the last part is you're probably most important. This is the one you're actually trying to figure out, right? If you're having no loss to Google, but you're having loss to the server that you care about, then we're going to do this entire process from the other side of the connection. So we just came from the server going out to the ISP to the internet and checking. We're gonna do the same thing from here. So from our server out of its connection and to the internet. All right, same as before, just from Linux. Log in through SSH. IPADDR is going to give you your IP address. Next thing we need is we need to be able to find our public IP. So we're going to use this URL right here to be able to figure out is this an equivalent to IP chicken. So curl and paste that in. There is the IP address matches our internal IP. So in this case, we don't have any NAT translation. We are initializing this IP address directly so we can skip a bunch of steps. So the next thing we needed was our hop out of the network, right? Trace route, not found. Install it. Trace route, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. There's all of our hops. It's just reverse the direction. So instead of the ping times at the beginning, it's ping times at the end. So here is our gateway, 66. So that's the other thing we wanna know about. And then the last thing we need from this side is, we just wanna make sure we can get to the internet. So 8.8.8.8 will be our third IP address. I'm, th I'm sure there's some kind of magic Linux utility that's gonna be able to do all this better. I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. So ping, and we're gonna do our first IP, which was our 77. We're gonna then create a duplicate the window. Ping, and the next hop out. Duplicate the window, and here we go. So, again, same idea. First hop will be our connection out. So we're going from here, so we're testing ourselves. We're then testing, because we don't have a NAT router, we're gonna do our first hop, and then we're just gonna test to Google. So, and if Google works, we know this one, this one is all working. We want to see statistics. We can go ahead and cancel this. Again, control C. How many did we lose? 
how many did we get, and all of our averages. So again, let's just recap. So if we're troubleshooting, we're seeing connectivity issues between an agent and a server or anything to anything. We have to isolate all of these different hops to be able to figure out where that connection is being broken between point A and point B. Ping and trace route are the tools we're gonna use and then we're gonna monitor each hop. Ping to here, ping to here, ping to here, ping to here, ping to the internet and ping to your fundamental destination. And depending on which one starts stuttering, that's where you know where your problem is. Good luck, have fun, and keep pinging.